Hello everyone, welcome back. As you can see, I have the massive new cooler in there. The biggest I've ever had. It's the NHU-14S, which really rolls off the tongue. And I think it's Noctua's biggest single tower CPU cooler. It is massive. As you can see, it, it barely fits. I'll close the lid so you know that it does in fact fit, but... Oh, <laughs> the glass came up. Technical difficulties, one second. Oh, come on. I hate when you have it on its side like this, because if you don't hold it down, it'll, like, come off the little railings here. I mean, it's easy, there we go. It's easy to take off to clean, but it still is annoying. So you have to kind of hold it down while you use it. But yeah, see, it just barely fits in there. <laughs> There's literally, like, a centimeter from touching the glass. It's pretty crazy. But the performance is also pretty crazy. But to kind of give you reference, I'm going to go through the line and show the previous coolers that I've had so you can compare against them. Up first is the stock cooler from what looks like 10 years ago. <laughs> just It actually wasn't. This computer I bought brand new. Not this one here. This is a brand new computer. 2021 purchase. But the computer that this came from was a 2015 purchase, which is new enough for a cooler like this to still be insane. <laughs> Back then, I didn't really know pretty much anything about computers, so this was fine to me. This was just, oh, that's a standard cooler. And I did everything from gaming on medium to high settings. This was back in the AMD FX series. It was a 6-core processor. So compared to today's standard, kind of garbage. But for me, it did pretty well. I mean, I didn't really know much about temperatures back then. So my motherboard would consistently get up to 180 to 900, or not 900, 180 to 190 degrees. And the CPU would sit somewhere around 160 to 170 degrees. And I do not mean peak, I mean sit. <laughs> it sits at 160 to 170. And this would be for hours on end, so for about four to five years of using the CPU, probably not good for the lifespan of both the CPU and the motherboard. Now I did, on that same 2015 PC, I got an 8-core processor, which was still in the FX series. So I got this cooler, because I figured, you know what, more surface area, has some copper in there, it has four heat pipes... I figured, you know what, this would be better. I mean, you compare them side by side, it has a bigger fan. It's technically shorter, but that's because it has more width to it. So I figured, you know what, that'll actually be better. Turns out, I was incredibly wrong. This was way, way worse. This one got somewhere around... Now granted, I did go from 6 cores to 8 cores, which obviously turns up the heat. And apparently, I looked into it, the FX series was known to get quite toasty. So, putting this on there, on an 8 core, which... Anyone who knows anything about CPU coolers, just looking at this, you know, bad idea. But I tried rendering one YouTube video, and granted, it did render incredibly fast compared to the 6-core. However, it also got incredibly hot. The CPU itself went up to, it went somewhere around 180 to 190 degrees, and a pretty high 90. I think I clocked it, but the highest it went was 198. And the motherboard around it went up to 200, and I think 210 degrees. Just because there was really, I mean, this thing couldn't hold any of the heat. So it all just went right back into the CPU and then the motherboard surrounding it. So yeah, not a good idea. I used this for roughly five days because I was waiting for my next cooler to come in and I was kind of stuck with it. So no YouTube videos and no hardcore gaming in that time period. And then we move up to the final cooler of the old PC, which is the Noctua U9S, which again rolls off the tongue. Now... Compare this to what I originally had, and there is a noticeable difference. <laughs> it is massive in comparison. And this one, even in my new PC, which this is what I transferred over, so I did, I had a previous video where this was in there, and that's just the CPU cooler that I was using. And this CPU cooler, it does work exceptionally well, do not get me wrong. However, underneath the current cooler, I have a Ryzen 5 3600, which is not a super powerful CPU, but one thing I was noticing is that I originally capped it out at 99% CPU because it kept trying to turbo. And when it would do that, the heats would get a little bit crazy with this. But eventually I put it back to 100% just so I can get, you know, all of the CPU and not try to bottleneck it. Because the temperatures would go up a lot higher, but I would also get better performance. So, you know, kind of a trade-off there. The only problem is the CPU was reaching max temperatures of around, typically it'd be like 175 when I was playing Destiny 2 on max setting 60 FPS, it was getting up to 182, I think. It was definitely up to 180, which 
was not good. Technically speaking, it does still fall within the specs of the CPU, but for me, I don't like it running the line that close, because even though it can, I don't really think it should. So it would basically, it would only peak around 180, but still, that was way too high for me. The standard operating was like 140 to 150, so I was figuring, you know what, that's pretty good, but I don't like it. Because I really, I like to stay about 20 degrees below what they say is optimal. Sometimes that's not possible, or much more difficult, but I at least do try to stay in that range. So that way, if it does peak, it doesn't thermal throttle or anything. And so that is why I upgraded from this one to the one that is in there now. To go over its base specs that I've been noticing is that whereas this cooler would sit around 140 to 150 on average, this one, running the same games, you know, Sea of Thieves on max settings, Destiny 2 on max settings, The Outer Worlds on mostly max, that one actually does run a little bit harder than the other two games that I've mentioned, and you have other ones like State of Decay 2, max settings again, 60 FPS on all of them. So this one, when running under the same load, it typically sits around 110 to about 120, maybe 130, and it'll peak at its absolute max up to 160, which is a huge improvement over the 180 on the previous cooler. And when I mean peak, on both of these, peaks don't really last that long. I, the longest I've seen was maybe three seconds, where it goes up to like 160, and then it's 155, and then 140, and then right back down to where it used to be. So the heat dissipation is incredibly good on both of the Nocto coolers, this one, obviously, a little bit more. <laughs> I'll show them side by side just to give you a comparison of the size difference, if I can get it in there safely. Yeah, not, not the same size. <laughs> much, much smaller in comparison. And the biggest thing, really, for me is the fan. I think this is a 92 or a 90 millimeter fan. This one is a 140 millimeter fan. I'll turn the light on so you can see it a little better. Eh, not that much better. <laughs> but either way, as you can see, it is a much, much bigger fan. I'll show you around the side a little bit, too. There is a pretty good amount of clearance behind it. However, the top, there is not a lot of clearance there. Although I do, because I'll show you the rest of the PC. Actually, turn that flashlight back on. On the inside, I have three intake fans, which this PC gets super cool super quick. And then I have three exhausts, one on the back, two on the top. And I'm going to put this down so I can get the angle right again. So all fans included, you have three intake, three exhausts around the back, you have the GPU fan, and then you have the CPU fan. And this one, I'm actually getting a new one soon, March 3rd or 9th, somewhere around there. I ordered from Lenovo, and they're taking exceptionally long to start shipping it. So I'll probably do a review when that gets in. But either way, the CPU core here, it works so much better than the previous one. They're both very good, but like I mentioned, this one just on average is about a 20 degree difference, which is very, very good. And to be fair, it is a 20 degree difference of not really that big of a deal, because like, as I mentioned, the other one was running within spec. I just wanted it to run below. I didn't want any risk of thermal throttling or just frying out the chip or the motherboard. Anything I can do to keep heat off of this and out of the case <laughs> is what I want. Now I know water cooling does get higher performance typically, but I just, I don't want water inside of here. <laughs> I know it can be safe if you do it right, but as I mentioned, running this thing for as long as I did, clearly I am not the one to be water cooling my PC. I'll take that one step at a time. And as you'll notice with the case here, there's also room for 140 millimeter fans that you can upgrade to. These are all 120s. So in combination with the CPU cooler, everything goes out very quickly, which if you don't know much about CPUs, this design as a cooler, I think, is much, much better, because I know everyone likes Ryzen's new stock cooler, but the problem that I have with it is, much like the other ones that I mentioned here, they're all downward facing. Like, you see that one? The air shoots down. You have this one here. The air shoots down. So I've actually gotten a lot more into the tower designs, because just simple, you know, airflow. You have the air comes in through the intake, then it goes through the system like this. The CPU sucks in the air shoots it right back out the exhaust. Whereas if you had one of these coolers, for instance, the air would come over top of it and it would suck it down to the CPU cooler, but then it would also push the air down to the CPU and the motherboard at the same time. So you're basically taking the hot air and you're just shooting it right back down to a solid, and it's just going to rise back up, and then the fan's just going to blow it right back down to the motherboard. 
So this design, as you would imagine, is a lot more efficient because it rises up off the motherboard and the CPU, which just right off the bat, it takes the heat off of the motherboard. It runs up the heat pipes, dissipates through the fins, and just already, it's off the motherboard. And then the fan, of course, blows through the fins, which cools down the fins, and then the air comes right out of the back and right out of the exhaust. So none of it goes back down to the motherboard, none of it goes back to the CPU, just goes right through. Just one continuous line all the way through. And I would like a little bit more clearance up here at the top. As you can see, they're practically touching. <laughs> so I don't really like the closeness of it, but I will say when you put your hand over here, the airflow is still really good. And also it's a little bit warmer than over here, as you would imagine, because it's so close to the heat sink. But I think that's actually good in some way because you have the fins on this side, obviously the air is blowing it that way. But then also when the heat rises out of here, the fans just kind of suck it straight out. So I think the closeness actually does help a little bit there. But yeah, as far as a review of this thing, I mean, what is there to say? I mean, this is just, to give this a score would be a 10 out of 10. There's really, I mean, there's no complaints. It's, it's The point is to cool your CPU, and it does. That's it. There's no drawbacks. There's no ridiculous installation. It's in there incredibly sturdy. As you can see, it is it is locked in tight. <laughs> Noctua has incredible mounting hardware that just will not move. I mean, if you grab it like a maniac, you could break it out of there, but just from typical use and movement, that thing's not going anywhere. Now, one thing I will say comparatively is that this is the smallest of the series here. There's one in between. I think it's the 12. So you have the 9, the 12, and the 14. Obviously, going from 9 to 14 is a massive change in size. So if your PC cannot handle that, I would say probably just go for the middle one. I think the 12, because that is the one thing that I would say as a con, but I mean, not really is the size of this thing. I mean, it is massive. It's about the same size as the motherboard. Completely dwarfs the graphics card and the RAM underneath it. Which, the RAM, actually, I had to let the fan ride a little bit on the top here because the Trident Zs down there, they're a little bit wider than your typical RAM stick, so it's, like, literally, like, a centimeter or maybe even a millimeter of clearance that it just... It might even be a millimeter. It might even be less than a millimeter, if I'm being honest where it won't fit down next to it. Technically speaking, it will fit down next to it, but it slightly tilts the RAM sticks, which I, <laughs> I don't want any of that. So that is the only complaint I would say is the size, but I mean, it's not really a complaint because the whole point of it being such a good heat sink is the size. <laughs> if it was any smaller, it wouldn't be able to hold as much heat. So it kind of defeat the purpose of it being a good heat sink and a cooler. So it just, it does what it's supposed to, and it does it incredibly well. And I was trying to run it for long hours. The hottest game that I play is Destiny 2, I don't know what it is about the backgrounds, but it runs pretty consistently higher than other games. Even Sea of Thieves, which is shocking to me. I would think that one on max settings, which is what I run it at, I would think that one would be hotter. But nope, Destiny 2, it runs a little steamier than the other games. All right, while wrapping this up, I'm actually going to, first of all, pull this back as I'm closing it so I don't take it off its hinge again. All right, there we go. And then I'm also going to show it powered on so you can see the RGB of the whole thing with it sitting in there, which looks really cool. Look at the majesty in action. As you can see, if you know the Trident Z RAM sticks, those are also RGB. Hold it a little bit closer so you can see that. Yeah, look at that go. <laughs> Funny enough, I was actually going to get the black case, but they were sold out, so I'm actually glad I went with the white case because it looks a lot better under RGB. But yeah, anyway, that's it for the video. Not really sure what else to say. I mean, just very good cooler. If it fits in your PC, get it. That's all I can really say. If it doesn't, go one step below. I think the the NHU9S is a good cooler, but I would really only do it if you're using like a small form factor PC. Not too small, obviously, because it still is a pretty sizable cooler, but obviously not anywhere near the size of this one. There is a dual tower one that's even bigger, which that one actually won't fit in here, so didn't even try to go for that one. But yeah, anyways, you can see I'm still working on some PC parts. I have the new graphics card coming in. This is the GTX 1660. And I actually noticed on Lenovo, they have like a ThinkStation brand, which I've seen mostly good reviews on it. So I just went for it because it was on sale for stock price, which a stock price RTX 2070 Super is almost like a ghost. It's just, it's non-existent. And actually, funny enough, after I bought it the next day, completely sold out and they raised the price by $200. So I got in at precisely the right time. So yeah, that's going to come in. I'm going to put that in there. And I'm probably, I'm doing some recording tests right now. Everything's running well, but I 
might hold off on getting into the swing of things until that new graphics card comes in. Because I checked, and it's pretty much double, if not triple, <laughs> in the categories that I looked at over this graphics card, so probably just better to wait for that. But anyway, hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video.